Hi everyone. So in this video, I will be discussing about graph representation using incidence matrix and incidence list. So this is the part 3 of graph representation. In the previous two parts, I have discussed representation of a graph using adjacency matrix and adjacency list. So we discussed about the concept as well as wrote the code for those two forms of representation. We also discussed pros and cons of each of the approach. So we will follow the same approach here and we will take the same example that we have used earlier. So let's check what is incidence matrix. So incidence matrix is basically a matrix of form V into E. So V is total number of vertices and E is total number of edges. So if you remember adjacency matrix is a form V into V. So adjacency matrix is symmetrical because both row and columns are of V size. But incidence matrix is an asymmetrical kind of a matrix where number of rows are V and number of columns are equal to the number of edges. Basically here each column represents that as an edge which is connected between two vertices. Possible values that we can have for an undirected graph are 0 and 1 and the values we can have for a directed graph are 0, 1 and minus 1. So now let's see how we can create an incidence matrix of an undirected graph. I've taken a graph which I've used earlier. So this graph has five vertices A, B, C, D, E and all the edges are labeled from E1 to E8. So now we have to create an incidence matrix of this graph. So the first step is we list down all the vertices in row wise. So we will list it down A, B, C, D, E in each row. And all the edges have to be written in columns. So all the edges are here in column E1 to E8. Now for each vertex we have to see all the edges that it is connected with. So vertex A is connected with edge E1 and edge E2. So if we go to the A row and for E1 and E2 we will fill 1 and for all the other edges we write 0. Similarly for B, B is connected with E1, E3, E4, E7 and E6. So all these entries are 1 for B and all the remaining are 0. C is connected with E7 and E8, for C, E7 and E8 are 1. So in this manner we can fill an incidence matrix of our graph. So now the question arises, what if this is an weighted graph. For a weighted graph, the concept remains the same. It's just that instead of 1, we will fill the graph with the weight of the edge. If the weight of edge E1 is 2, so for A and B, we will fill 2. If weight of edge E2 is 3, so for A and E, we will fill 3. So just that instead of 1, we will write weight of the edge. So one important point here to notice is so you can find out which edge connects which two nodes. So if you check for each column, you will find out that there are two entries are 1 and other are 0. So the two entries that are 1 will be the nodes that are connecting the, with that particular edge. So E4 is connected with B and D. So we can see E4 is connected with B and D. Similarly for E7, we can check two entries are 1, B and C. So E7 is connected with B and C. So this is an important property by which we can find out that which edge connects which two nodes. So now let's see what if this is a directed graph. So in undirected graph direction does not matter. So we have filled it with 0 and 1. But in directed graph the edge direction also matters. So here we have to fill the graph with three possible values. The three possible values are 0, minus 1 and 1. For all the outgoing edges we will fill entry with 1. For incoming edges entry will be minus 1 and if no edge is present then it will be 0. So let's check for A. So for A two outgoing edges are there for E1 and E2. So E1 and E2 entries are 1. For B there are four outgoing edges E7, E6, E4 and E3. So for B these, these four entries are 1 and B has also one incoming edge E1. So for B this entry is minus 1. For C there are two incoming edges E7 and E8. So for C there are two entries E7 and E8 which are minus 1. So in this manner we can fill incidence matrix for a directed graph. So now let's try to find out what are the disadvantages of using this form of graph representation. One thing I would like to mention here is that incidence matrix is not very popular choice among programmers. Most frequently used form of representation is adjacency list and adjacency matrix. So there are a couple of reasons for that that why this incidence matrix is not very popular. Let's try to find out what are those reasons. So the first reason why it is not popular is the space it takes to create an incidence matrix. The space it takes is order of VE. 
So where E is the number of edges and V is the number of vertices. So in case of dense matrix, where number of edges are a lot more than number of vertices, then the space it takes is not very efficient. So that is why this is not a very popular choice. Second reason is if we have to find out whether a particular node is related to some other node, then there is no straightforward method of checking that. Let's try to see that if you have to check whether B node is connected with C node. So how are we going to find out in incidence matrix? So if you remember in adjacency matrix, it was straightforward that we have to check only for that particular entry in the matrix for B and C, we'll check whether one is present or zero. If one is present, then an edge exists. If zero is present, an edge does not exist. But here, what you'll have to do is you have to pass the rows for B and you'll have to pass the rows for C. Then have to you have to find a common entry where both of those are one. So we can find out that in E7, both B and re C columns have entry as one. So that means E7 is the edge that connects both B and C. So we'll have to do a linear search in both of these rows. So it will take order of E time. That is worse than adjacency matrix. So we can say if you have to find a relation between two nodes, then it is not very efficient to use incidence matrix. And the third reason is if we have to find an adjacencies of a particular node, then there is no straightforward method in that also. Let's say if you have to find an adjacency nodes for vertex D. So what we'll have to do is for vertex D, we'll have to see which of these columns have entry one. So we found out that for E4, E5 and E8, there are three columns that have entry one. So E4, E8 and E5. Now we'll have to find out that for E4, which is the other entry in that in this column, which is one. So for E4, B is one. So that means one of the adjacency nodes of D is B. If we check for E5, for E5, E is also one. So E is also adjacent node. And for E8, C is also one. So there are three adjacent nodes, B, E and C. So this will also take order of E because we'll have to search all the edges. So this is not also very efficient in case of incidence list. So due to these three reasons, it is not very efficient and it's not a popular choice among programmers to use this form of graph representation. After discussing incidence matrix, we are left with one another form of representation which is known as incidence list. Now this form of representation is quite controversial because in most of the books only three forms of representation are present. But a few authors have mentioned about it and this is an interesting form of representation. So anyhow we will discuss it. So what is meant by incidence list? So it is a list in which for each vertex we store a list of objects that represent the edges that were incident with that vertex. So for directed graph, an edge will be present only for one vertex. We only store the outgoing edges and in undirected graph, we store both edges. But the issue is that if we have to draw the graph back from the incidence list, then we need to have information that which edge is contributed or which two vertices. So for each edge, we have to store some extra information so that we can create the graph back from incidence list. So now let's see how we can print an incidence list if we are given a graph. So this is a directed graph. I have taken the same example that we've used before. So we have five nodes here, A, B, C, D, E, and all the edges are labeled from E1 to E8. So the first step in printing the incidence list is, so we note down all the nodes. And now for each node, we have to check what are the outgoing edges. So for A node, we outgoing edges are E1 and E2. So we note down E1 and E2 here. So for B, the outgoing edges are E3, E4, E7, and E6. So we have noted down E3, E4, E6, and E7. For C, we have no outgoing node. For D, the outgoing nodes are E5 and E8. For E, we have no outgoing node. So basically, this is an incidence list for a directed graph. But now, if we try to print a graph given an incidence list, then you'll see that you will not be able to print the graph from this because here you know that for node A, we have two outgoing nodes, two outgoing nodes and they are determined by edges E1 and E2. But you do not know where these edges terminate at. So for this kind of information, what we do it do is for each node, we store what is the endpoint of that edge. So here we store E1 and B. Here we store E2 and E. Similarly, we check for D. So for E5, 
So E5 terminates at E, so we have to store E5 and E. And for E8, it terminates at C, so we have to store E8 and C. So for E, so for B also, for all the edges, we can store this endpoint information also. So now with this form of representation, you can also see that there is a clear disadvantage that we are storing extra information for each edge. Whereas in incidence list, we were just storing the adjacent vertices. So that is why the incidence list is not a preferred form of representation when we are doing programming or whenever any graph related question is there. So, so now let's have a look how we can implement both incidence matrix and incidence list. I'll be using C++ and all the code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository as well. Link of that is available in the description. So now let's jump into the code. Okay, so for incidence matrix, I've taken a 2D array of V into E. So V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. So V is 5, E is 8. So it is the same example that we have discussed. So now we have I've added all the edges. So I've created one function add edge. So it takes three parameters start, end, and edge. So start and end are the vertices, and edge is the edge name. So in the diagram E1, E2, E3, till E8 is present. So from 0 to 7, I've demonstrated the numbers as edges. So in add edge function, I take the three parameters. And since u was the starting vertex, so it is the outgoing edge. So for u to e, I've entered as 1. And if it is not same, so it is not a loop, then I've entered v to e as minus 1. So in this way, I'm building the incidence matrix. And then I'm just printing it. So if we run it and the output that we will get is the incidence matrix will be printed and it is the same that we have shown. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we can implement incidence list. So for incidence list, we have to take an array of vectors and each element of the vector will be of pair. So pair will be of edge and end vertex. So I've added the same function here, add edge, and I'm passing the start, end, and edge parameters to this function. So in the list, I'm creating a pair, pair of edge and the end vertex. So this way I'm creating all the entries in the incidence list. And at the end, I'm printing. So I'm printing the first element of the pair and the second element of the pair. And this is the vertex. So if we check the output, the output will be, so incidence list will be printed like this. So this is the pair that we have stored. So this brings us to the end of the graph representation series. We started with adjacency matrix and list. And in this session, we have discussed incidence matrix and incidence list. I hope you guys have understood it. And if you have any doubts or suggestions, please give a feedback in the comment box below. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.